What is going on, everybody? I go by the name of Kari, and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. Today, we're here to talk about Complex Con 2019 in Chicago, Illinois. I just got back a few days ago. Got a lot to talk to you guys about. Got a lot to show you guys. We're going to be taking a look at my pickups from merch to sneakers, and I'm going to show you guys and tell you guys a little bit about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, if you guys are totally under a rock and you don't know what Complex Con is, first of all, Complex Con is a human humongous convention that is put on every year since 2016, sponsored primarily by Complex. Now, of course, Complex is a huge entertainment, lifestyle, and street culture type of company that started off as a magazine and has blossomed into a huge corporation that takes over YouTube, different original programming such as sneaker shopping, and so on and so forth. So again, every year since 2016, Complex has put on Complex Con, which has been a convention that showcases the latest and greatest in street music, celebrities, sneakers, and so on and so forth. Now, this year was a little bit different because Complex announced that they were gonna be doing two Complex Cons this year, one in Chicago, Illinois, and the other one in Long Beach, which is normally where it is. I had the esteemed privilege of going to Complex Con in Chicago, no sponsorships, just a whole lot of money that I had to pay out of pocket, and I went out there and I documented my entire journey for you guys. So, let's start at the beginning, and let's get all the way into what happened. We'll talk a little bit about Complex Con, about what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and then we'll go into why Complex Con, in my opinion, was kind of trash this year, at least for VIPs. So, I flew into Chicago on Friday, and as soon as I flew in, the very first thing that I knew I wanted to do was go check out the MCA. However, before I got to the MCA, the homie Kixology hit me up and told me about the StockX pop-up shop that was going on one day only in Chicago. Now, the thing that was cool about the pop-up shop is that there was something a little bit of merch, and they had some of their more famous sneakers on display like the off-white Chicago ones, uh, some of the Don C2s with a Chanel bag next to it, a couple Rolexes, things of that nature. But the really dope part of the pop-up shop was this influencer giveaway that they had where they give away StockX credit depending on the amount of followers you had on your social media page. Now, because of where I currently am on my social media page, it's not the biggest, it's not the smallest, but I went ahead and got a $100 StockX credit that I could use for any purchase. So, shout out to StockX for that. Now, after the pop-up up shot was over with I jetted over in an uber down the street to the Museum of Contemporary Art where I finally was able to see the Virgil Abloh figures of speech exhibit if you have not seen the exhibit yet I strongly suggest that you guys go and see this exhibit it is incredible down at the MCA it highlights his entire career starting from when he created Pyrex Vision to Hood by Air it talks about all of the accomplishments that he's had in his career it talks about some of the downfalls it talks about the cease and desist letter that he got from the United Nations and of course, most notably about the exhibit was the collection of rare and unreleased prototype sneakers that he made with Nike when he was designing the tent. If there was no other part of the exhibit that had people just with their jaws dropped, it was that part of the exhibit. There were so many photos being taken, so many videos being taken, so many security guards, big security guards that were all around it, making sure that nobody touched any of the sneakers. But man, that that in and of itself is just worth the trip right there. Now, after the museum was over with, I went ahead and jetted over to Nike Town real quick just because I wanted to check it out. Tried to buy a couple pairs of sneakers, but unfortunately they did not have my size. And after that, went ahead and called it a night, shot over to the hotel, put it down for the night. I've been a long day. I was flying all morning, came in, did all that kind of stuff. So I was beat down by the time I got to the hotel. Day one, Complex Con. I had an outfit all put together for you guys. I actually did the Fearless Jordan 1s, the unreleased Fearless Jordan 1s that actually got me a cameo in Unbreakable Kicks' vlog from day one of Complex Con. Check that out if you haven't seen it yet. I had a VIP pass for the weekend. Now the VIP pass full price was $720. It was double the price as previous year's VIP access. Now with the VIP, you got an entire package with the VIP. Matter of fact, let me, let me show you what came in the VIP package. This was the VIP box that you got when you got the VIP package. Now, when you open it up, the first thing that you get here is a little card that says Complex Con. It has some instructions on the back of it. Then you got a Complex Con sticker, another Complex Con sticker, a pop socket for Complex Con Chicago, which I don't really know if anybody even uses these anymore, an air freshener that says Complex Con Chicago. You got one, two, three enamel pins for Complex Con Chicago. And last but not least, of course, including the bracelet itself, you got a uh, photo booklet here 
that actually has a lot of the highlights and photos from the last few years of Complex Con. Now, the pop-up booklet features stuff like sneakers that were released as well as celebrities that have attended in previous years, things of that nature. In my opinion, it actually represented all the stuff that we didn't get to experience in 2019. So I get to the VIP line. There was already a pretty thick VIP line that was going on, but nowhere near as long as the general admission line. And I was thinking, okay, cool. We get two hours extra. We're gonna get in there. We're gonna get to shop, things of that nature. Not at all. Pure chaos. As soon as they opened up the gates, people bum rushed the gates, they jumped over the gates, they ran to the entrance. It was utter chaos. The crazy thing about it was that I was really hoping that this year, especially for the amount of money that had to get paid for the tickets this year, they would have better, more beefed up security, and they would have a better way of controlling the crowd this year so that people didn't just bum rush the gates because that's what they've been doing every year. But no. They still bum rush the gates. Once I got inside, the first thing that everybody did was they ran straight to the Atmos booth because everybody was trying to get the animal pack. Now, congratulations to everybody that touched the animal pack. I was not getting in that line. You guys were fighting. You guys almost destroyed the entire booth trying to get your hands on those sneakers. I didn't want any parts of that. So I went over to the bait line and actually stood in the bait line for about two hours before I was able to get everything that I got out of that line. Again, I'll show you guys all that when we get to the merch part of the video. Saturday was okay. You know, I'll get into the good, like I said, the bad and the ugly in a little bit, but I just want to give you guys a general overview of what Complex looked like before we really dive into the nitty gritty. Now, the boots were designed really, really well. Some of the boots were a little bit better than others, but a lot of the companies and a lot of the boots that were represented there really, really took their time to make sure they came out with some innovative experiences and some really Really cool merchandise and some really dope experiences. The Sacconi booth actually stuck out to me because they had this really dope, uh, the year 2000 is coming vibe because they released, I believe, two different pairs of sneakers that all tied into this 1999, 2000 vibe. That was really dope. Puma had an amazing boot there with Mr. Former Simpson, who I actually got to chop it up with for a minute, which was really, really dope. So shout out to Mr. Former Simpson for chopping it up with me, got to meet him. That was really dope. I actually got to meet a lot of people that I was just talking to on the internet. I finally got to meet them for the first time in real life. So that was really, really dope. The Reebok booth was an incredible booth in my opinion. They set it up kind of like a carnival game where you could shoot basketballs and you could shoot a big ball if you made all of your smaller shots in order to try to win Allen Iverson's chain that they said was worth about $8,000. The Lyrical Lemonade booth was very, very dope. Lyrical Lemonade actually was run by Cole Bennett and the entire team. I got to meet the homie that goes by the name Coppin Rockham on Twitter and on Instagram. She was a part of the team that put together that booth as well as a number of other booths in the building. They had different people that came and did meet and greets there. They sold some really, really dope merch. I got a little bit of merch from Lyrical Lemonade as well, as well as Home Team, which was actually, again, the homie Coppin Rockham's brand that she was rocking with as well well. So I actually got a t-shirt from there that I thought was really, really dope. I'll show it to you guys in a minute. Who else had a nice booth? The Dan Life had a really, really nice booth as well. He had jewel encrusted life-size sneakers, actually bigger than life-size sneakers. These really huge works of art on display. The music was meh, okay at best. I didn't think that the music lineup made a whole lot of sense. LMA to me didn't really fit the crowd. The crowd seemed a little bit dead when she was on the stage. They perked up a little bit more when Rick Ross was on the stage, but Saweetie was, you know, she did well, but again, I don't know if the crowd really received her all that great. Schoolboy Q closed out the weekend on Sunday. I thought that he was really dope, but again, I don't know about how the crowd connected to it. If they had had a Travis Scott or somebody in there, the building probably would have been on fire. Honestly, day two Sunday felt more just like a day that everybody was trying to get through because none of the booths really that sold out on Saturday restocked anything on Sunday, which I thought was really ridiculous because in years past, a lot of the bigger booths and bigger brands that brought product into the building restocked on Sunday, but apparently that just wasn't the case with this complex con. Now, I understand that there were a lot of smaller brands there. Maybe they may not have had the money to produce that amount of merchandise, but it made it really difficult if you had a two-day pass like I did because by the time Sunday rolled around, everybody was pretty much out of everything. The Atmos booth, as a matter of fact, that's a great example to start with. By the time Sunday rolled around, they had sold out of the gold bear bricks and they had sold out of pretty much all the pairs of the Air Max 90s. Now, the situation with the Air Maxes is that apparently there was like one more pair that they said that they had in a size 12, but the Atmos finesse was that you either had to buy some merch along with the pair of Air Maxes, or you had to buy another pair of sneakers, the LeBron 16 Atmos, in addition to getting the Air Max 90s. So what ended up happening was that you had to end up spending somewhere between four and $500 just to be able to get your hands on the Air Max 90s. That is why you see the price of the animal pack so 
high because a lot of the people that ended up buying the sneaker are just trying to make their money back and break even because they had to spend so much money to get the shoe. So I didn't really like that. Now I'll tell you who did a fantastic job of restocking on Sunday was the Foot Locker booth. Foot Locker and Converse did this incredible little bodega looking strip mall set up here. Their line was completely wrapped around the building. It was ridiculous, but they debuted the UV light activated sneakers, the Chuck Taylors that they had there. In addition to the untitled, uh, not a Chuck, uh, we'll take a look at those sneakers as well, but they did an incredible job, not only with their merch, but with their entire experience. The people that were working there, the team that was in the building with Foot Locker, honestly, I think Foot Locker probably had one of the best displays in that entire building. Okay, let's get into the good about Complex Con, the things that I actually enjoyed about the weekend. Number one actually was the food and the scenery. McCormick Place was an incredible venue because they had this beautiful view of the lake right outside of where they had the food set up. It was absolutely gorgeous and the food was great. The music was fantastic. It was all sponsored by Uber Eats who actually gave out codes throughout the weekend to get free delivery and things of that nature. Even if you weren't in the venue, just ordering regular food. I thought that was really fly. A lot of the boot designs I thought were really, really good. I could tell that brands like Puma, Reebok and Foot Locker really, really took their time to come out with some really innovative and incredible and very interactive boots as well. So salute to all of those companies and all the companies that were represented at ComplexCon because again, they really did an incredible job. The panel discussions. The panel discussions are definitely something that I thought was really, really good. And honestly, one of the only times that I actually felt like VIP was even remotely worth it. But I ended up going to the full size run live taping and I ended up going to the David Banner, TI and Killer Mike discussion about taking back the block, buying back the block. Incredible discussions, really, really entertaining stuff with the full size run live taping. I mean, the, the, the conversations, the panel discussions and the live tapings were really, really well done. Very well done. And the merch I thought was actually really good. The merch that I was able to get my hands on, I thought was really well done. High quality stuff from some really, really great brands out there. So honestly, I think that the merch that was available and the shoes that were available were actually really well done. And finally, the music, I'll give a seven out of 10. I think that the music overall was pretty good, but I just feel like a lot of it didn't really fit that venue. Now, let's get into the bad, the things that I did not like, not only about Complex Con, but about the VIP experience as a whole. Like I mentioned previously, VIP cost $720, not including flight, not including hotel. Now, for my hotel, I'll be honest with you guys, I stayed at the Marriott Marquis Hotel. That hotel cost about $220 a night. That hotel ran me just under $900 for the three nights that I was there, including the $720 plus tax that I paid for my VIP bracelet. Luckily, I had frequent flyer miles that I used for my flight. However, all in all, with the Uber rides, ended up somewhere around $2,000 in cash spent for the weekend at ComplexCon. And I'll be honest with you, it wasn't remotely worth that much money at all. Like I said, the lines were absolutely ridiculous. When it came to the lines, there was literally no difference between general admission, early entry, VIP. There was no difference whatsoever. Everybody had to stand in the same lines together. They had to wait the same amount of times together. Yes, I understand that VIP got a two hour head start, but the problem is that VIP and early entry all got a two hour head start. So what that means is early entry paid $370 for their tickets if they got an early entry ticket, but not VIP. VIP paid almost double that price, but didn't get any extra added benefit than early entry got. So if I wanted to run to the Atmos booth, I could have used that 300 and some odd dollars that I saved towards my purchases that I ended up making at the Atmos booth. So VIP was already down 300 and some odd dollars before they even started buying any merch to be able to shop at the exact same time as early entry. Complex, you guys aren't watching this and nobody pays attention whenever we try to give you guys suggestions on how to make the experience better. But let me give you a little bit of a tidbit just in case somebody with some real power and influence suggests it as well. VIP, two extra hours of shopping time early. Early entry, one extra hour of shopping time and then general admission comes in when general admission does. By doing so, you make the VIP feel a little more VIP. Not only that, but I also would like to suggest VIP only sneaker raffles. Only VIPs can enter into them for, you know, a coveted pair of a sneaker, MCA off whites or something like that, which I don't know whose idea it was to only raffle off two pairs per day of those MCAs, but 
that was a dumpster fire. That was just nonsense. One other thing that I thought was actually pretty dope. This is more of a Nike thing, not really a Complex thing. But during Complex Con, Nike actually surprise dropped the yellow Air Fear of God ones at a specific location, actually two locations, one at McCormick Place and one at Wintrust Arena via a sneakers stash. Now, I was out there with the people. I did not get my hands on a pair of those. The networks were way too congested because too many people were out there all trying to use their phones at the same time. And mobile apparently is trash i later learned at least in those circumstances however i thought that that was something really good about the weekend as a whole again not really complex con because that wasn't really a complex thing but that was something dope that happened while i was out there getting back to the bad the organization was really really lacking when it came to crowd control line control and actually understanding who got what access to what what I mean by that is when I was going into one of the live tapings, the early entry line was actually taken first ahead of VIP. And there were a lot of people that were yelling and complaining because VIP actually had to wait for the early entry and for other people to go first when VIP was supposed to have first access. Which leads me into the ugly, which honestly the ugly part of Complex Con is what it is every single year, which is the greed and the fighting. Guys, I don't... I, I, I take that back. I do understand why everybody fights because everybody is trying to get their hands on this shoe so they can flip it and make a lot of money off of it. A lot of people come out to Complex Con with their last dollars in their pocket, with their rent money, with their child support money, and they're basically gambling that money, trying to get some sneakers so that they can flip it and make even more money on it. I get it. However, nothing gets accomplished when you guys are out there fighting with each other, knocking over boots, destroying stuff, yelling in people's faces. Listen, Everybody can't get everything out here, all right? And you guys really gotta understand that if you guys wanna make this a better experience. I think part of that is the fault of Complex for really not doing that great of a job, especially separating VIP and promising a VIP experience that really didn't feel like one at all. And you guys just acting crazy out there, running around, knocking over people in wheelchairs. I heard somebody had a seizure. Like, y'all, listen, it's just sneakers at the end of the day. It's just merch at the end of the day. Like, y'all really gotta chill out. That's what's making this culture so ugly. Now, I'll tell you what I've really found interesting about the state of the culture right now is that when those Yellow Fear guys dropped, that place cleared out like they had a bomb threat in it. You had never seen Everybody just drop everything that they were doing and just totally run out of the building. That place emptied out like crazy when those fear guys dropped, man. And that told me everything I needed to know about the state of the culture. It's all about money. It's all money driven. It's all greed. And honestly, because of that, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go to another complex kind of get and be around all of that nonsense and that madness. Honestly, I can sit right here in Alabama and just get the sneakers that I want off StockX or just try my luck at getting them online for retail price because being in the midst of those crowds with all that fighting and that running and that madness and it was just a lot going on. My ultimate hope is that Complex does a better job about giving the VIPs a truly VIP experience because on behalf of the VIPs Complex, y'all dropped the ball on this one. It truly felt like a Complex con, no pun intended. It really felt like a money grab at a lot of points because I really didn't see any extra benefit of being a VIP at all. <sighs> all right. With that out of the way, let's get into the merchandise that I picked up at Complex Con. Here we go. First things first, again, starting with the MCA members only bag designed by Virgil Abloh for his figures of speech exhibit. Now this bag is a little bit different. They had a khaki colored bag that you could buy in the pop-up shop, but the white one again was only for members. So you can see it has the MCA by Virgil Abloh down there in the corner. And it has the word member down here in the right corner on this side of the bag as well. So really, really dope bag. Now, in the pop-up shop, they had a lot of things that you could buy. This is one of the things that I got from the pop-up shop. This right here is an off-white trucker hat. Thought it was really, really dope. They also had some t-shirts that they came out with. This is one of the MCA t-shirts. This is a limited edition. They only made 100 of these. They actually brought them out as I was in line waiting to go into the pop-up shop and everybody grabbed them up as soon as they could. But really, really dope shirt by Virgil. This was another one of the t-shirts here. It says number one, figures of speech on it. I thought this was a really flash shirt as well really really well done this is a t-shirt that i got from a brand called success it's a chicago based brand i thought it was really dope and they were actually doing a raffle where if you bought a t-shirt they actually gave you a raffle ticket that you could get a whole bunch of rare sneakers for retail price i didn't win but i still got the shirt 
official complex con merchandise this actually just came in from zen they gave you the ability to actually shop online and skip the lines at complex con as long as you ordered it off of the wi-fi inside of the building and so i did that and actually went ahead and caught one of these tees t-shirts were expensive this year most everybody's t-shirts cost like 50 dollars. so i mean that added up real real quick i think this shirt was also 50 bucks it's, it's kind of expensive but here it is. All right, the I Respect Rihanna t-shirt that I got from Don't Be Mad, which is actually an offshoot brand designed by Joe Fresh Goods. Joe Fresh Goods had an amazing booth as well. A lot of people were there. This one apparently came because he had on a visor that had a rather vulgar comment towards Rihanna on it. And to make up for that, he actually came out with a run of these t-shirts, both in black and white. This is a collection of postcards that I got from the MCA exhibit, Virgil's exhibit. This is actually my favorite one with the Pyrex 23 crew on. I thought that was really dope. Matter of fact, I think I'm gonna give these postcards away. If you would like one of these postcards, DM me on Instagram at Lyrical Fetish. Let me know what your information is. I'll choose five random people and I'll send you guys the postcards. They'll be blank. I'll send them in something else, but let me know if you want one and um, I'll ship it over to you. We'll do a little giveaway. Next up, I went by Vintage Frames and actually finally got myself a pair of vintage frame glasses. Now I've been following this brand for a long time. If you guys know Upscale Vandal, he I believe is either invested in the business or is a big part of the business, a big fan of theirs. He was in the building as well. What do you guys think? Can I pull them off? I don't know. What do, you, what do you think? Sound off in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think about these. Next up, the Lyrical Lemonade booth. They actually had four packs of this actual lemonade in the Lyrical Lemonade cans here and I actually got a cup to go along with it. I actually haven't even tried them yet. It's pretty good lemonade. Everybody and their mom had tote bags and little free merchandise that they were giving out. This is actually from the Lipton Brisk booth. As you can see, it says Creator Inspired. They actually have these hats that say Creator Inspired as well. And I actually got a cool story from the Lipton Brisk booth. So there was a lady that was actually working in the booth and I was talking to her a little bit while I was getting some of the free merchandise. She saw that I had a t-shirt from Chinatown Market, a black shirt that said Complex on it. And she said she really wanted the shirt. So I asked her what size she needed. She actually said that she needed a medium. Medium. And I actually let her know that I had a medium and she could have it. Just gave her the shirt on the spot, just like that. And she was like, really, I can have it? And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem, you can have it. So she was like, hold on real quick. I got something extra for you for giving me this shirt to tell you thanks. And she actually gave me this here. Now what this is here is a can of what's called Whoop Ass Iced Tea from Lipton Brisk. It's apparently one of their newest iced teas, but this can was actually signed by Roman Reign, who is actually in the new Fast and Furious movie, Hobbs and Shaw, that's coming out on August the 2nd in theater. So shout out to DeVita from the Lipton Brisk booth for actually hooking me up with this autograph can of this new tea here from Lipton Brisk. So that was dope. This t-shirt here is from the Home Team booth. Again, like I told you, the homie cop him and rock him and her team that's called Home Team actually helped out with a lot of different boots this was actually their merch that they had here stitched in you can see it says from the jump through it all by any means which i thought was really really dope so you guys will be seeing this shirt on in a future video another tote bag from reebok this one had the Allen iverson logo on the back of it i won this by shooting some shots i made a couple of shots at the booth and won a tote bag at most was giving out sneaker wipes even after they got rid of all the sneakers uh as you can see all of the sneaker wipes have a different animal print on them for which pair of sneakers they had. So they were giving these out for free. Also, I got an Atmos tote bag that I thought was pretty dope. And I got the Atmos animal print shorts. Now the shorts were actually a limited edition collab between Atmos and Dave White. You can actually see Dave White's signature there on the right leg. And they're really, really good shorts. Good collaboration, good shorts, good quality shorts. But $140 for a pair of shorts is a lot of money for a pair of shorts. So these were really pricey. Next up, I went by the Foot Locker and Converse booth. This box got pretty destroyed because I had all my merch shipped back to me because I had too much to take with me on the plane. So looks like the box got kind of messed up in transit, but it is what it is. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Untitled Chuck Taylor, AKA Not A Chuck. Now this is actually the medial side of the shoe you guys are looking at here because this is the left shoe. As you guys can see, it has that old school Converse logo right there at the top. 
all black upper that says not a chuck that's actually stitched in the middle of the shoe but it's actually embossed on the upper and the lower part of the upper of the shoe all orange on the inside of the sneaker all orange outsole on the sneaker as well a little thicker midsole here so this actually is a little more comfortable than the regular chuck taylor's as well and on the heel of the shoe you got that converse logo right there now remember i said that they actually set the Foot Locker booth up like it was a little bodega in new york somewhere complete with a fake jewelry store that actually gave out free fake jewelry when you purchase a pair of the sneakers. I chose to get a gold herringbone chain that I thought was really dope. And with each pair of shoes, you actually got a gold necklace that had a Chuck Taylor nameplate on it in gold as well. Next up, I went over to Chinatown Market. I got this beach ball here with the Chanel logos all over it. And they actually threw in a magnet and a sticker pack for me as well. So shout out to Chinatown Market for that. And last but not least, I went by the Bait booth. Now, Bait released these Gundam tees along with Bait on Sunday. They actually did not have these available on Saturday, but when Sunday came around, they actually had these Gundam tees in blue and red, and I think a different color as well, which were pretty limited. A lot of people grabbed them. Also grabbed this, the Astro Crash Vinyl Doll, which I thought was really, really dope. It's in black and gold, and it shows just like it looks here with Astro Boy's feet up in the air, looking like he crashed down face first into the ground. I thought it was really, really dope. A lot of people ended up picking this one up. And last, but certainly not least, at the bait booth they also had these the limited edition bruce lee funko pops so this one here is the enter the dragon funko pop i also picked up the yellow suit funko pop and the coup de gras the bronze bruce lee funko pop and that's it that's everything that i picked up from complex con and the museum of contemporary art for the chicago visit 2019 version tell me what you guys think about the merch pickups tell me what you guys think about complex con as a whole if you ever have been there tell me what your experience has been if you haven't been there let me know what you look forward to or if you even plan on attending if you like what you saw today make sure that you click a like on this video right down there and while you're down in the comments make sure that you click on that subscribe button right down there we would love to welcome you into the sneaker fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like all of this stuff because i guarantee you i got a lot more heat on the way as always i want to thank you guys for joining me here today on sneaker fetish taking a look at all this stuff that i brought back from chicago and listening to me ramble on and on about complex con for a few minutes i go by the name of kari this is all the stuff that I got from Complex Con. And until next time, I'm out.